be, you know, uh, families with two working parents trying to raise kids and deal with health problems. What can we learn from their relationship, or what did you take away from learning more about them? Well, I, I mean, I think it's a very elemental lesson, right? I mean, you have to have a support system, um, either among your friends or your, or your family, uh, or, your, or your colleagues, or maybe, maybe all of those things, right? Um, I think that that's really um, what makes for a rich life um, that is successful in many ways. And I, I think that, uh, you know, I don't think that <clears throat> they set out to be role models or to forge a new path. Um, they found what worked for them, and they had the, uh, they had the, you know, the energy and the commitment to live their lives in the way that they thought was best for them. I think that that's true of probably everybody in this room. Everybody has a support system. Um, I think that that's what sustained you in life and sustained you um, in, a, in a career. I don't think that they were self-conscious about it. I think they sort of, they didn't say, oh wow, we're doing something you know, that's really different where I'm a you know, husband who's supporting my wife's career over my own. I think they just did it because each of them recognized who the other was um, and each of them decided that they would provide that sort of you know, unique love and, and support. Uh, but it doesn't need to be, you know, a spouse, it doesn't need to be a family member, it can be your own sort of personal kitchen cabinet, uh, or you know, or whoever it is that you that you draw you know energy and support from. And I think that's really the message of the movie is you don't need to live like somebody else, you don't need to take somebody else's advice, you don't need to have the same support system as anyone else, as long as you have those things and give yourself permission to have them in your own way. I think that that's sort of the that's what I took away from. <laughs> I think the other piece of it that's that's worth considering is that the roles weren't always exactly the same, and there were times when uh, Justice Ginsburg um, did the things that she needed to do to make sure that everything was together, particularly when her husband was ill the first time. And there were a lot of sacrifices that she made and things that probably at that point in time in her life she would have preferred to have uh, happening a little differently. And um, it's pretty amazing to think that she was able to accomplish as many things as she was able to get done in the time period that she did them. But she, she just did it. And I think she also appreciated and it sort of demonstrates to all of us, it's always a good reminder that things aren't always perfect. Um, but if your work is important to you and your family is important to you, you're going to figure out a way to get it done. Um, and that was something that I think guided her through much of her life. She just got things done um, and made sure that things that were important to her were a priority, kept them in focus, didn't let a lot of the white noise and other people's expectations get in the way. Do you agree with her assessment not to waste times on um, emotions like anger? <laughs> that must be one that she felt wasted time for her, but I think there are a lot of other either emotions or um, activities or things that people will try to distract you with or that society will tell you are important and you really have to make those decisions for yourself as to whether or not there are things you want to spend your time on. Um, I think uh, some folks have said, you know, you'll be called upon and asked to do different things and you have to say, how does this impact me? How does it impact my work? How does it impact my family? Is it going to make me happy? Uh, is it going to help my career? Are there things that make it worthwhile or is it something that I can easily put down and say no to and emotions, I think, fit in those boxes. I think we all, we all have emotions, so I think it's what you do with them and how you channel them. And so you can be angry and then just your energy dissipates and doesn't help anybody, or you can be angry and try to channel it in a positive way and try to change people's uh, opinions or change what they're doing. And uh, so I think anger is actually very, can be a positive and motivating thing, depends what you do with it. I just wanted to comment on um, Justice Ginsburg's incredible generosity. I mean, here she is, she's what, 85, 86 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and she is, uh, she's basically demonstrating that you, that you can, you can change your outlook uh, and change what you do, um, even into your ninth decade, right? I mean, she is a very shy person, very understated, and yet she's sort of taking this victory lap. Um, <laughs> very, very publicly for all of us to see, she is 
you know, engaging with people she clearly is, you know, very, very energized by, but it's not something that she was naturally inclined toward even, you know, probably, you know, 10 years ago. So um, I think I think it's a very hopeful uh, movie, um, both in terms of the challenges that she overcame, um, her intellect and discipline, uh, and also that she's, you know, she's really enjoying things and she still works 97 hours a day or whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe work on the work-life balance. <laughs> Are there any questions from the audience before we wrap it up? All right, well, thank you for coming, everyone. Thank, thank you, you to our